Mr. Sparks, would you turn to Exhibit 172, please? Set. Yes, Mr. Now, this is a series of emails that concerns a deal called Anderson that Goldman put together in March of 2007. Anderson was a $300 million synthetic CDO, and so what it did was reference certain other securities. This referenced subprime RMBSs or residential mortgage backed securities. Many of those securities were originated by New Century, which was a subprime lender notorious for poor quality loans. Goldman participated as one of the short investors, as you can see from that exhibit. They bought loss protection, or bought the short side, for $100 million, about 50 percent of the short side and 50 percent of the referenced assets. So from the beginning of the deal, right from the beginning, Goldman is selling Anderson Securities to clients, but it's betting against that CDO. It got, in the words there, protection that pays off if the CDO assets, the referenced assets, start losing money. So first, if you'll take a look at the, the following email, Goldman's clients reject the deal, first of all because it has so much poor quality new century mortgages. For example, look at the third page of the exhibit. A client asks how Goldman got, quote, comfortable with all the new century collateral, in particularly the new century service deals. Now take a look at the internal response at the top of the page. What it is is to get Goldman salespeople on the phone to allay the clients' concerns about New Century collateral, but that doesn't work. The next three emails tell the same story. Three more clients, Rabo Bank, Smith Breeden, and Turwin, reject the deal. Internally, the drive to sell Anderson continues. Keep pushing the clients to buy. Look at top of page six. Anything more from you guys, or are they officially dead now? Now, Goldman is asked a question by a customer, potential customer. What, what did you guys do to get comfortable with all the new century collateral? How can you get comfortable with that collateral? That's a well-known company that has a very, very bad record. And what is your response? The response is, hey, we're going short. We got half the short side. We're betting against this deal. You're asked a specific question. How do you guys get comfortable with this? Instead of saying, hey, we're betting against it. We're taking half the short side. What you do is you tell your salespeople, Try to sell this deal. You don't answer the question. You don't respond to a direct question. So you continue to push hard. Finally, there's a sale that unloads $20 million in Anderson notes. Page 7, Goldman's of that same exhibit. A Goldman supervisor responds with a single word after you unloaded $20 million in Anderson notes. Profit! Exclamation point. Eureka. He later, he didn't, Eureka's my word. He later congratulates the team. Excellent job pushing to closure of these deals in a period of extreme uh, difficulty. Now your clients didn't want to buy Anderson CDOs with that exposure to the new century mortgages, but you still pushed hard. Why did you not inform your clients that Goldman was short on nearly 50% of the Anderson CDO 
when selling Anderson securities to them? That's my question. Why didn't you tell them you were going short? Mr. Chairman, there are, there are about eight emails in here. I, I didn't see the email that suggested that we were short, and I was trying to find that. All right. Take a look. It's at a... You have the document. 92. 93. Take a look at document number 93. Within this exhibit? or I'm No. Document number 93. Okay. In there. 93. And 94 together, showing the shorts. Can you show me the two documents? See where it shows the counterparty, short side of the deal. Goldman Sachs, Goldman Sachs, Goldman Sachs, Goldman Sachs. See all that? Yes, Mr. Chairman. Okay, now answer my question. I, I, I believe this shows the counterparties, yeah. which is Goldman Sachs. Times was Goldman Sachs. That doesn't mean that Goldman Sachs wasn't doing that trade with another client. So it's very difficult for me to say from looking at this. Whether we were short or not, we might have been facilitating trades for clients. Assuming you were going short and staying short, let me ask you the question. Should you have told that client when they ask, how are you getting comfortable with this? Should you have told them you were going short if you were? And Mr. Chairman, just are, so not particular to this because, again, I don't know. No, in it. this case, I'm asking you in this case, you ask a question. How do you guys get comfortable with these kind of mortgages, with this kind of a mortgage broker? Well, again, I don't know if we were. I know you don't know. Deal. My question is: Assuming you went short, okay, and stay and intended to stay short on that deal, that's my question. Should you have then told the customer, asking you the direct question, how can you get comfortable with this? That it was your intention to go short on 50 percent of the short side and stay that way, if that was the fact. That's my question. Again, no, no. I Answer I'm my question. I'm just trying to understand exactly what the question is. The question is very clear. You said, well, you weren't sure whether or not you were buying that 50% for somebody else. That's what your answer was. My, my right. question is, if you were buying, as we know you were, 50%, that's my question. If you were buying that short, 50% of the short for yourself, for your account, my question is, when asked, how can you be selling this security? How do you get comfortable with the source of this security? Was there an obligation at that time, if you were going and intended to stay short with half the short side, was it your responsibility to answer that direct question, hey, we're going short and we're staying short? That's my question. How do you view your responsibility? That's my question. Under those circumstances. So, Mr. Chairman, this transaction was a static synthetic, which meant the assets were the assets and they couldn't change. Anybody participating in it should look at the assets themselves. Aren't those assets, are those assets, a, are those open to everyone who buys those synthetics? The specific assets or are they protected? Are those not commercially protected? The specific source? Uh, if that's a legal question, people no. have access to the information, Mr. Chairman. The buyer knows the assets and they have questions about them. The, the buyer is raising a question with you about these assets. He's asking a direct question. How can you get comfortable with these assets from this source? How do you guys get comfortable? Your answer isn't, hey, under my hypothetical, which is not hypothetical, it's factual, but assuming you are going to buy half the short position and keep it. My question is, did you not have a responsibility to answer a direct question? How can you get comfortable with these products from that source by saying we're going short, half the short is what we're buying? That's my question. How do you view your ethical responsibility? Mr. Chairman, and again... Again, you don't want to answer the question. No, the question that investors 
should and did focus on were whether the names that they had risk to were something they actually wanted at that price. My question, Mr. Sparks, is a very direct question. You were asked a question. Goldman was asked a question. How do you get comfortable with the source of these securities? Instead of saying, disclosing right at that time, but I think you ought to disclose anyway when you're on the other side of a deal. We'll get into that. But instead of disclosing that you had half of the other side of the deal, half the short side, you did not tell them that. Instead, you told your salespeople, keep pushing this deal. You had three people turned it down because of the source, and you kept pushing it. But now answer my question. When you're asked the question, how do you get comfortable with these securities, given the dubious source of this security, given the amount, the amount of, this, of how much, how dubious this was because of its source. How, you got clients, they don't want to buy the security with so much exposure to the new century mortgages. Those new century mortgages have had problems. I, I'm going to ask you for the last time, and if you don't want to answer it, you can say you don't want, you don't want to answer it. But clearly, you understand it. Did you not have a responsibility when you were asked point blank, how do you get comfortable in this kind of a situation when there's so much exposure to new century mortgages? Did you not then at least have an obligation to disclose, hey, we're not comfortable. We're going selling this thing short. We're going on the short side. That's my question. Do you understand the question? Mr. Chairman, I understand the question. I haven't gone through all of the emails, but the, the, what clients who did not want to participate in that deal did not. And the client, client asked you a question. How do you guys get comfortable? It's a question. So what was your answer? Mr. Chairman, we, did you tell them? We would have had the sales force get on with the deal team and walk through each security <coughs> that they had exposure to and answer any questions that they had about that security. Don't you also have a duty to disclose an adverse interest to your client? Do you have that duty? Do you? About? If you have an adverse interest to your client, do you have the duty to disclose that to your client? The question about how the firm is positioned or our desk is positioned? I'm if you have an adverse interest to your client when you're selling something to them, do you have the, do you have the, op the responsibility to tell that client of your adverse interest? That's my question. Sure, Mr. Chairman, I'm just trying to understand. No, I think you understand that. I don't means. think you want to answer. I don't think you want to answer it. How did you get comfortable with all the new century collateral? Mr. Chairman, Were I'm, you, I mean, I'm just going to go on because you're just going to, you're going to keep the, you're not going to answer the question. It's obvious. In particular,